Hi there, and welcome to Position One Power Equipment. My name's Adrian, and today we're going to look at some routine servicing on your P5100 SPE lawnmower. Let's start with the replacement of the air filter. Now the air filter is located inside this box on the front left hand side of the engine from the operator position. To open the box and reveal the filter, you will see two tabs on the top of the box. Simply push down on the two tabs and the box hinges down to this position. The air filter is located here in the lid and can simply be replaced, no problem whatsoever. So replace the new filter, paper side down first with the rubber shining up, locate it back in position and click it shut, making sure that the two barbs are fully entered into the slots in the top of the air filter box. And that's how to change your air filter. Let's move on to changing the spark plug. The spark plug is located underneath the spark plug cap here on the front left hand side of the engine. Firstly, gently remove the spark plug cap by pulling it away from the spark plug. Don't be too aggressive with this as there is a danger you will pull it right off the lead that goes into the cap. And we'll tuck that to one side. So the spark plug is here, and to remove it we'll use a box spanner or spark plug spanner and rotate it anti-clockwise to loosen it off. Once you've loosened it, I'll unscrew it most of the way with a spanner and then remove it by hand. And that's the spark plug removed. To replace the spark plug, screw it back in by hand to start with get it started. If you were to use the spanner at this point there's a danger that you may cross thread the spark plug in its threads and that will damage the head. So I screwed it back in by hand until I can't turn it anymore and now I'll tighten down the spark plug firmly again with the spark plug spanner. And the final little job we'll just retrieve the spark plug cap, place it over the top and push it home until it clicks home firm and that's the spark plug replaced. Let's move on to changing the engine oil in your lawnmower. The best thing to do is to run the lawnmower for 5-10 to 10 minutes to get the engine oil nice and warm and it's not as thick and it will pour out through this tube far easier than if it were cold and there's a likelihood you will get far more of the dirty engine oil out. So the first thing you need to do is to remove the dipstick. So we'll do that. So having removed the dipstick, by far the simplest way to get the engine oil out is basically to tip the machine up on its side. And probably if you had an assistant for this with a suitable container underneath the spout, and you could tip the engine right over and allow to the engine oil to pour out through the filler tube. But a cleaner way of doing it, and the way that I do it with these machines, is I've got one of these little vacuum extractor bottles, and these are available from our parts department, and I can simply place the tube down, right down into the engine until it won't go anymore, and simply with vacuum, this is actually an empty one, but with vacuum, you can suck the engine oil clean out and into the container, and it's far by far the easiest, cleanest way of removing the old engine oil. So having removed all the old engine oil, I can simply top it back up to the correct mark on the dipstick, and we'll show you that. On the dipstick there's a min symbol on the bottom, M-I-N, which is the minimum, a cross hatched area, and then it says maximum, M-A-X, right up until you, it, the oil level reaches the level of the maximum. So continue pouring in the engine oil, which is a 1540 semi-synthetic engine oil, allow it time to drain down the engine, dip it by simply placing the dipstick on top of the tube and withdrawing it until the oil level is approximately on that maximum mark. Once you've got there, replace the dipstick. Now that's the oil replaced. Let's move on to removing the fuel from your lawnmower. 
Now you may ask, why would I need to remove the fuel? And the answer is quite simple. Fuel kept for a long period of time will go stale. Modern fuels go stale fairly quickly. If you leave your lawnmower for a long period of time and the fuel goes stale, there's a high likelihood that your lawnmower will not start next time you come to use it. So that's why we recommend that if you're going to leave it for a long period of time, end of the season, something like that, or you're not going to use it for a month or so, sometimes it can be short as a couple of weeks if it's in a hot environment to remove the rest of the fuel. Now the simplest way to do this is to let the lawnmower completely run out of fuel on your final use and then to drain the last drops from the carburetor and we shall show you that. If you haven't removed the fuel and you end up with stale fuel, I'll show you how to remove it from the fuel tank, remove it from the carburetor with a couple of different options and ways to do it. So the simplest way to remove fuel from the fuel tank would be to remove the cap and again, using the vacuum bottle, the same one that I use for the oil, you can pump the fuel out into the vacuum bottle. This tank holds around a litre and this bottle holds just over a litre, so you would get a full tank of fuel into this bottle. Okay, so that's the simplest way to drain the tank, but there are other options. You could siphon the fuel out, there are several ways of doing that which I won't go through. You could tip the lawnmower over and empty it into a suitable container if you had some assistance. But there is a simpler way to drain it from the top of the tank all the way down and out of the bottom of the carburetor and we'll show you that. So to drain the carburetor of any residual fuel we do it at this point here. Now there are two bolts on the carburetor, one on the very bottom which points vertically upwards and one here which points in at an angle of 45 degrees. It's this one on the angle that we're concerned with which is the drain port. So. If you've already drained your fuel tank, a quantity of sort of absorbent paper roll, something like this, undo the bolt, the drain bolt, with a 10 mil spanner, there we go, and I'll simply remove it by hand, and this holds sort of an egg cup full full of fuel, and it should be absorbed by this paper. So, we would have an egg cup full of fuel coming into this paper, and it will then be drained. If you've left fuel in the fuel tank, it will continuously pour out through this hole until the fuel tank is empty and the float bowl is empty. If that's the case, I'd recommend that you had a funnel under here with a short piece of pipe and allow it to drain into a suitable container. So once it's fully drained, take note that there is a little fibre washer on the bolt, a little red washer in this case, sometimes they're black. Once it's fully drained, make sure that you haven't lost the washer. Screw the bolt back into the float bowl and tighten it back up firmly. And that's how to drain the fuel from your lawnmower. If you've stored your lawnmower for a long period of time, there is a high chance that the battery may be flat. So as with initial charging, as it says here, five hours, you will need to use the battery charger, plug it into the little jack socket here, and then plug the charger into a 13 amp outlet. It may take up to five hours. Once completed, take the plug out of the socket and remove the battery charger. And that'll be your battery recharged, ready for use. Another reason for your lawnmower not starting may be a badly adjusted OPC cable. Now the OPC cable comes from this handle, the operator present control, basically the start-stop switch for the lawnmower and when you put it fully back you should hear a click from a micro switch at the other end of this cable and on this case there's no click and as you can see I have got a fair bit of slop in this cable so I'll take you down to the engine end and show you how to adjust that. The OPC cable terminates at this point here and we have too much slack in this cable. It's adjusted by bringing back this adjustment position here. Now what we're looking for is that when we pull back on the handle, that's me pulling on the handle at the top, this micro switch here, the red unit, has a little tab on it and you can hear it click on off. And that's basically the on off switch for the lawnmower. So at this position it's off 
And when I pull back the OPC, as you can see, it's not switching it on. So I need to adjust this back until I do get that switching on. The simplest way to do that is to loosen off these two nuts. I'll just loosen this rear one off here. Loosen the front nut. We'll loosen that well out of the way. I'll pull back maybe three or four mil on this cable and tighten the rear nut. We'll just try that. Still not enough. So I'll go a little more. Just pulling gently on it, tighten the nut against this back face. Now I can hear the micro switch working. I've still got the front one loose. I'll just pull on this cable gently, maybe another half turn. Tighten up the front nut against the bracket. And again, a little bit tricky to get in there. off the two nuts. Now as you can see there's very little play in this cable. When I pull on the lever you hear the click. That allows the lawnmower to be switched on and it will now run. So I'll take you back and show you the slack in the top handle. So having adjusted the slack down the bottom you can now see that there's a bit of tension in this. I can only wiggle it a couple of millimeters. And when I pull the handle, we can hear the click. And my click is actually happening there, and I have a little bit more travel. Okay, so now I'm happy that's the OPC cable adjusted. So moving on, I'm going to show you how to change the lawnmower blade and the lawnmower drive belt. Now I'm going to be tipping the lawnmower up onto its side for this, so I recommend that you drain the engine oil and the fuel from the lawnmower before doing this in the manner that I've previously shown. So as you can see, I've tipped the lawnmower up onto its side. Now another little safety precaution would be to remove the spark plug cap from the spark plug to avoid any chance of the mower inadvertently starting while you're rotating this shaft because basically that's the same as attempting to start it. So disconnect the spark plug cap as an extra safety feature. Okay, so what we need to do is undo the central nut to remove the blade. So I'm using a 17mm socket with a half inch ratchet and I strongly recommend that you wear suitable gloves because you'll be gripping the blade and it is quite sharp. Okay. So we'll just loosen off that central bolt. Now you'll notice that there is a washer on the central bolt and that will come off with the bolt. Now this washer is domed down towards the ground and is hollow on the other side. So should you remove the bolt and it fall off, you know which way it goes back on. So I'll just remove the bolt and the washer and it's hollow on the side that faces upwards and domed downwards. So that's the bolt and washer removed. Now this blade has a direction of rotation and as you look at it, it's anti-clockwise. And you'll see that there is a series of numbers on the blade stamped in here. So when you come to replace the blade, you know that the numbers face towards the ground. So I'll just pull the blade away. Now, as you can see, the blade will go on that way or that way. It makes no difference. But what you don't want to do is put the blade on upside down. And it won't actually go upside down because there are, is a flat on both of these holes. And on the drive pegs here, there is a matching flat, which means it will only go on the one way round. So we'll take the blade away. So to replace the blade, you simply put the blade back onto its two locating lugs, bolt back in the centre with the dome facing down towards what would be the ground, and tighten the bolt back up. Before I replace this, we'll move on to changing the belt, because you need to remove the blade to change the belt. 
And I'll just take that away and place it to one side. So the next thing we remove is this drive plate here. Now it has a keyway inside it and a drive key. And as you can see, the drive key just fell out. So the drive key is here and it fits in a keyway in the main output shaft from the mower. When you come to put this back on, you'll notice also that there is a spacer down in the hole. Make sure you don't lose this spacer and make sure it's down in the hole before you replace this plate. Again, the keyway in the drive plate lines up with the keyway on the drive shaft, little rotation, little jiggle, and you can put it back on. So just bear in mind not to lose the little washer and the key at this stage. So I'll place the washer back in there and put the key in there for safekeeping. And I'll put those to one side. So the next step to access the belt is to remove this belt cover here. Now the cover is fastened on with a nut and bolt here and a nut and bolt here. On the top side of the mower is a 10mm nylock nut and this will take an 8mm. So I've put a 10mm spanner on the nut, well I did until it fell off. Here we are. I've got a 10mm spanner on the nut here on the top, just holding it, stopping it from rotating. And I'll undo this screw here with a little nut driver. I'll just pull that screw out. And I'll retrieve the nut from the other side. And there's the nut from the top. And directly above on the top of the deck, you'll see where the nut is. So I'll just remove the bottom one. Which is there and remove this one. Okay, there's a nut and bolt from the bottom one. So now this guard just clicks into this plastic housing here but is retained by this cross head screw. So next we'll remove that screw. So I'll just undo this little screw So I'm going to remove this screw with a crosshead screwdriver. So that's the screw removed and the guard can now come away freely. The guard actually clicks into this location here so just pay attention, the lip goes on the outside here and what have you, just pay attention to the way the guard is fitted at this point before you remove it. And there it is, out of the way. So I'll place that to one side. Now this gives total free access to the belt. So to remove the belt, you'll see that it is under some tension. If I rotate this housing by putting my hand in here, I can release the tension, it is sprung loaded. So if I just release the tension, I can simply pop it off this pu um, pulley here. So once I've done that, I can just unhook it off the rear pulley and that's the belt removed. So to replace with a new belt I'll simply come back in in the same way, hook the belt over the rear pulley which is very similar to this one, slightly larger. Again release the tension by rotating the uh, drive shaft at the back here, the axle shaft, rotating it like this. Release the tension, roll it back over the nylon gear at the front, let go and that's the belt replaced. So now we need to move on and replace the guard. So as you can imagine, replacing the guard is exact reversal of the way we took it off. So I'll just locate it back in its position, pop it into its little location there, and there we are, it's back in position. Back in with the screw here, That's that one done. Now place a bolt through the top hole, one of the two bolts. Just loosely do up on the back side. A little nylock nut till it's finger tight. So exactly the same with the bottom one. Put the bolt in the hole and just screw the nut on the top until it's finger tight. So back on with my spanner, 10mm spanner. 
just holding the nut from above and tighten this one up. Pass that one done. And exactly the same on the bottom. That's the guard replaced. So we'll replace the dry flange, the key, and the spacer washer now. So we'll just make sure that the spacer is down inside the dry flange. I'll replace the key into the slot. I've actually rotated it upright so that the key stays in. If it was at the bottom, as you can imagine, it would fall out. I'll line up the keyway in my flange with that key on the top, just put my finger on it to hold it and that's it, I've replaced the flange. All that remains now is to replace the blade. So I put my gloves back on. If you remember the writing faces down towards the floor and the arrows show the direction of rotation, there's no writing on the other side. So if that's facing the floor, back in with the bolt, again hollow side towards the blade, dome towards the floor and I'll just tighten that up finger tight. So back up my 17mm socket, just tighten that down, and I'm going to tighten this very tight indeed. Here we are. Now if you do have a torque wrench, the torque setting for this bolt is available from our service department. So that's the belt changed and the blade changed. All that remains now is to lay it back down, reconnect the spark plug cap, put oil and fuel in it, and that's the job done. So one little thing that I've been asked from time to time is how to change the pull starter unit on your lawnmower. So I'll show you that. I'll just remove the uh, pull starter cable from the pigtail at the top and drop it back down towards the mower. Now, on this mower, this orange cover clicks into position. You'll probably remember that from when you first purchased the mower and you had to fit this top. So you simply reverse all the way it's fitted, squeeze the sides, and there are two lugs at the front, two lugs in the centre. You simply squeeze the sides in, until they pop out and then I'll just feed the cable through the little slot in the plastic cover which was here and that's the plastic cover removed. So now that we've removed that all that remains is to undo these three nuts one two three because this unit here is the pull starter. So I'll take a little 10 mil nut driver and undo the three. Now take care not to drop these nuts down inside as it'll be difficult to retrieve if you do drop them. So that's one removed. The bolts will stay where they are, that's two. And that's the third one. Now just take note of the direction of where the pull starter is before you remove it and put the new one on. So there we are. Taking care not to drop the nut. That's the three removed and simply withdraw the pull starter assembly away from the lawnmower. And these are readily available from our parts department. To replace it, get the rotation right, it will go on you know, all three directions as it were because they're equal spaced holes. So we want the handle over here facing towards the right hand side. Place the pull starter back over the three bolts. Just pop it down. I'll just start the three nuts by hand, screw them down finger tight, back up with my nut driver, just loosely tighten all three first, there's two, that's three right, tighten that one, tighten that one, tighten that one, you can give them a little tweak with a spanner just to make sure that they're fully tight. And there we are, that's the pull starter replaced. So to replace the cover, 
Again, feed the string through the notch in the orange cover. You'll see the two tags at the back. You'll see two holes they go in. We'll slot those directly into the holes and then work it in our way from back to front. We'll just squeeze the sides to get the plastic lugs in the holes. And there we are. That's it, pop back down. Simple little two minute job to replace the pull starter. All the parts that I've used today for servicing this lawnmower are readily available from our parts department. You can call them on 01646 687880 or alternatively you can contact them on www.p1pe.co.uk I do hope you found this video useful. For more information on this or any of our other products simply visit our website and that's www p1pe.co.uk I've been Adrian and happy mowing.